high school football. For some, it is just a game. But for others, it is everything. In some areas, like in the Ohio Valley, you could almost consider it its own religion. Every Friday night, the populations of entire towns flock to their team's stadium to cheer the young heroes on to victory. Some teams compete for championships, while some teams fight hard just to have a shot at making the playoffs. But for one small Ohio high school, they are fighting to win their first game in nearly five years. The senior players on the Buckeye Local Panthers have never won a high school football game and have seen a losing streak that started when they were just kids in junior high grow to 42 straight losses. This is their story, told from their perspective as they set out to end the streak and begin changing the culture of their football program. I mean, it's been difficult. We live in an area that really prides itself on football. So whenever you come to football for like 18 weeks out of the year, your entire goal is to win games. And it's been difficult that we haven't won any, especially with so much pride in the area with the football programs. Oh, it's terrible. I mean, everybody's counting on us to win. I mean, it's very rough to uh, come out your whole high school career and not win a game until your senior year. and. Uh, it's, it's terrible because you become the laughing stock of the Ohio Valley because football is big around here. And uh, uh, I don't even know how to express how I feel about it because it, it does cut deep into you. It's not easy not being able to win a football game. I mean, it's been hard. People talk a lot and you're always reminded about it. It's hard. You know, you got all these other teams, it's like, you got teams that are 10, 15 miles away and they're winning games and you just can't understand why we're not getting it done. It's tough. It's hard to go through. It's been rough, pretty rough. It gets kind of like, like worn, you start getting worn down. You start getting beat down. You start getting just all over mentally just beaten. Like every year you come out expecting, oh, maybe I'm going to win it this year. Maybe I'm going to win this year. Maybe I'm going to win this year. It just mentally beats you down to the point where you either decides whether you're just going to quit, whether you're going to get back up. That, that's when you have to decide whether you are going to get back up and are going to try out again and go for another season. It sucks. We put in all this work and like, feel like you're ready for the win and all of a sudden like, you lose at the end. Like, we've had a couple close calls but on all these hard work and stuff. And just losing, it sucks. Like, I'm tired of it. It's been stressful for us. It's, uh, I think the kids feel the pressure, maybe in a positive way. We're under the gun a little bit, and I feel that, in my case, we have to win games this year. We, we may not be here, uh, and maybe rightfully so. If, uh, if we go 0-30, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the problem, and hopefully not, but uh, that's not in our plans. We plan on winning some this year. For the last six years, since you guys won the second grade, the varsity team, so even though you guys weren't playing, the varsity team has won two and three and uh, has a current losing streak of 42 games, which you guys have been involved in 30 of them, uh, because you guys have all played as freshmen as well. So what has motivated you guys to stick with it, even though it's looked like you may have won? Just because we've had the same group of kids since we were junior high, we don't want to give up on each other. You know, we have other kids leave, go to other schools, but you have your close group of guys right here that just want to be the, the guys to get it done. What motivates me is basically the fact that my dad always talks about how he was in high school and I always want to live up to that and make him relive his past through me and be everything I can be to make him proud of me. My senior, my friends, my brothers almost, we've been together all these four years expecting maybe we'd be the group. Prove people wrong. We're doubted throughout the valley at this point. Uh, it's. It's a motivational thing. Most people will think, oh, why would you play? You're not going to win any games. But all of us, we're like, we're going to play to win a game, to prove everybody wrong. It's just a mindset that you got to have. You're like, I'm going to prove these people wrong. 
we really just want to like get the win for this school. Like we've been trying so hard for like four, five years, and it's just like we need the win. Like um, we want to end the streak. That's all. Coming into that first week matchup against Barnesville High School, the Buckeye Local Panthers were 32-point underdogs, according to some of the local sports radio guys. But all week leading up to the game, the team seemed to be able to put the anxiety of the losing streak and the opening game jitters to the side. Getting off the bus that evening, they looked relaxed and confident. Two things that this team has lacked over the last couple of seasons. I believe that they had a good balance of respect for their opponent but they were also ready to prove everyone that picked them to go winless again wrong and show that they were not the same Buckeye local Panthers that the Valley has become accustomed to seeing. Use your brains, you're smart kids. 
won't let anybody tell you that. Smart kids, you get your brains out there. You've got good football lines. Let them go. Let them go. Don't let the emotion, don't let everything else overcome your vision of what is going out and going on out there on that field. Do the basics with block and tackle, run the football game for your Run it like you're mad. Run it like you're mad. You want to get that? Get that again. It's not. You're back. A whole lot of room for you. There should be like 10 kids here right now. There should be. But you didn't. They didn't kill you. You're still here. It's like a song. We're like a song. Go get it. Go get it.
local QB Seth Richardson gets it back into Barnesville's possession. And the Shamrocks, they capitalize on this. Hannah's to meet an eight yard drive. Shamrocks continuing to push their lead. It's 26 to eight. Middle of the fourth quarter. That's where we are right now. We're down at the six yard line. Caden Lake runs it to score the first of the evening for him. It's 33 to eight in favor of the Shamrocks. As some of the fans began to leave the stands and that clock ticked down to zero, it was obvious that the Buckeye local Panthers were not going to win this game. The Barnesville Shamrocks proved to be the better team on this night. That, coupled with some of the self-inflicted mistakes they made, had those remaining in the stands beginning to voice their disappointment. The same familiar chants that have been echoing through four straight winless seasons began to be heard as the players made their way to the locker room. As the negativity rang loud outside of them visiting locker room doors, the atmosphere inside was shifting. With this team, this loss, it felt different. Instead of the here we go again attitude, this team was hurt. You could see it in their faces, you could hear it in their voices. They had put in way too much work to lose like this again. The player leadership and accountability that had been lacking throughout this losing streak was being birthed in this opening night defeat. Hope was alive. Confidence was still there and the challenge was being laid out in front of everyone in that locker room that night. Every week is a game. I am tired of being the joke. Seriously, get this game out of your head and just focus on UL now because there's not better than us. No team on our schedule is better than us. We beat ourselves every year. And when we stop it, We're not quitters. You can hit us with 400 punches and we're going to stand back up. No matter what, we will always have each other's back. We, we win together, we lose together. It's, it's a team. You can't break it up. Well, I think we all learn to uh, keep everything under control and not to panic because last year against UL, we were beating them at half and we panic because we don't know what winning is like. Don't give up. You gotta keep going at it again and again until you're able to get that result you want. If you give up, there's no point in even trying. Because if you try, at least you have the opportunity that maybe, maybe you'll get it next time. Maybe you'll get it next time. Maybe you won't. If you just quit, that's it. You don't get that other You don't get the next opportunity to succeed. I mean, like, you gotta always work hard no matter what you're doing in life, whether you're on the football field, whether you're at work. And uh, things can get tough sometimes, but doing your job, you have to do it to your full potential. And, uh, 
the character of just everybody, just never give it up. I mean, you have to have some kind of strong character not to leave. When you lose that many games, you just, there's something going on there. Uh, well, our coaches always tell us to keep our head up and keep trying as hard as we can. Uh, the main thing is that uh, just to never give up. Never give up is pretty much the main thing after losing all those, all those games. Uh, I've learned everybody has a breaking point and a point where their attitude and their demeanor changes. Some guys, when you're 0-9, they'll pack it in, they'll call it a season, and game 10 just a joke, but other guys get really upset, and they really want to win bad, almost as bad as they want to breathe. So, uh, how do you think the division has affected the way other students look at football players? When you come to school, Absolutely no respect. Honestly, it's just, you walk around and people, you know, you see like the kids that, like the stars of other sports and stuff, they get love like when they're winning and stuff, but you see the football players, oh, are you guys going to win this game this week? What are your odds this week? Just no confidence in any of us. I mean, they definitely disrespect us. I mean, it's hard. Like, what would you say, when they look at you guys, what do you think they see? Just losers. We are the laughing stock of the school, and it's awful. Uh, I've, I've been to another school, and I went to Union Local. At Union Local, the football players were king of the school. It is not that here. Uh, we get laughed at because we play football, and it shouldn't be that way. We we kill ourselves every day, and nobody has any pride in us. It's it's difficult. Oh, it definitely affects us. It, it it affects everybody at our school. Everybody looks down on us. They always think they don't they don't have any confidence in us anymore. Well, uh, they laugh at us like we're some kind of joke, but we're really not a joke. I was asking this, are you guys gonna actually get a win this year or are you just gonna like come closer? Like, they're, they'll, they always say, we'll be happy if you get better or get one win. No, like, they don't realize how much work we're putting into it and how much it like actually sucks to be a part of a football team who's never won a game. After a tough week one loss, week two brought a familiar foe, the Union Local Jets, a team that Coach Herbert wasn't just familiar with through game film and scouting, but a team that he helped coach for years. Not only that, but it was the very team that he played for during his own high school career. So this game was not just a game that could potentially end the 43 game losing streak for Buckeye Local, but it was a game that would allow him to get his very first head coaching victory against his alma mater. So it was a pretty big moment for him that evening. In hopes of adding a little more inspiration to the team for that home opener, we had approached Coach Herbert about having a good friend of ours, Jason McLeod, come up from his home in Georgia to give a pregame talk to the team. Jason isn't just an inspirational speaker and pastor, but he is also a diehard football guy who had the opportunity at 18 years old to play Brock Kelly in the worldwide successful faith-based football movie, Facing the Giants, before playing college football at Georgia Southern University. So it was a treat for a small Ohio team to have a guy like Jason come and share his heart before the game. You might gonna pay for it. Cause they're gonna get tired, they're gonna get hot, but it's still cooler up here than it is in Georgia. Y'all all right? Yes, yes, all right? I'm excited to be here. Really honored. I want you to know that first and foremost. Really honored. I want to give you very quickly something that changed my life. I think it's unique that you guys got to see the film. Um, that is not my identity. That's not who I am as a person. Obviously, football is a big part of my life. After synchronized swimming didn't work out, football just worked for a big, thick guy like me, right? And so, let me just tell you, I'm so excited to be here. I'm grateful to be here. I'm honored to be here. There's nothing like walking in that door and like reading that tagline right there. We walk through this door together. Every time you come in here and prepare yourselves, every time you walk out of that door and prepare yourselves, every time you go out there and do, you know, what you put in the work to do, you're here because this matters to you. You're here because each other matters. You, right? This is special. 
This is something you will carry for the rest of your life. I'm 33 years old, and when I walk in that door and I smell that stench in here, I looked at my friend Matt who wrote me, I said, this is home. This is home. There's nothing like being in this room together with each other. Win, lose, right, wrong, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. You're together. You trust each other. Or you're learning to trust each other. And that's the word I want to kind of present before you for the next five, six minutes is the word trust. It's a hard word. It's a word that requires humility. It's a word that requires surrender. It's a word that requires you to dig deep and find out who you are and how much you need uh, each other. Um, for me, my story, and I'm not here to push this on you, I'm just telling you what changed my life. Jesus changed my life. Not a movie, not the opportunity to play uh, college football, which I was all about for a long time. Uh, as much as I love being a husband, being a father of four children, those things are incredible. Those things are very much a part of my life. But ultimately, entrusting myself to other people and ultimately to Jesus. Uh, you guys got to see that clip. You guys got to see that movie. I was 18 years old. Who's 18 in here? 18. At that point in my life, I was digging deep and trying to figure out what kind of man do I want to be. I'm working hard. I'm first one in, last one out in the weight room. Uh, we won one game a year in my high school. I was ready to do something different, but it didn't matter if we were down by 50 or if we were up by seven at halftime and then lost by 50. I, it didn't matter. I was with the guys beside me because it mattered to me. And I was learning what it meant to trust. How about fuck that low? Kind of snap a 43 straight game lead. Panthers last win came in week 8 of 2014. The first drive. Peyton Taylor, Ryan Palmer, 6 0. Fuck that local. First quarter. Taylor this time hands up Charlie Smith. He's facing two point conversion today. And the Panthers are up 14 0. And they're feeling If there was a word to describe what that halftime locker room felt like, it would be nerve-wracking. This team was right where they had been working so hard to get to. A two-touchdown lead at halftime, the defense was playing the best game they had played yet, the offense was clicking, but as you looked around the room you could see on each of them players' faces the internal battle that was going strong. The weight of the moment was beginning to show. They had been here before so close only to lose the game in the second half. The memories of just last year against the same Union local team were fresh on their minds. Now I'm not sure how any of them mouthpieces survived that intermission, but I know that if halftime would have been one minute longer, they would have had to run to the store to buy more just so they could play the second half.
Buckeye Local is up 14 to nothing. And we're playing with fire at Buckeye tonight. Early third quarter, Jets looking to punt, but it's blocked by Ryan Palmer Jr. And the Panthers are in business. Here comes Buckeye. Charles Smith takes the handoff. Breaking tackles, picks up a first down. Then it's Palmer Jr. Oh, some nice, nice moves here. He's right in the belly, right in the bread basket. Stays up going and will score. Buckeye has a 20 to nothing lead. Local, the last time the Jets lost to Buckeye Local, 2012. Panthers trying to snap their 43 game losing streak. They're starting to celebrate in Buckeye land. Buckeye defense, oh, they were stingy all night long. Here's Danny Nation. He drops Dakota Hess for a loss. Buckeye, well, they would run it out from there. Palmer with a first down. So uh, what do you think you're going to do uh, when you look at the scoreboard, the clock runs down zeros, you see more points on your side than their side, and the reality starts to set in, the streak is done. What's your reaction first thing? Probably my heart's going to drop. and. Uh, I don't know, it's just, my heart's just gonna drop. I really don't know. We'll see what happens. How do you guys feel? It's amazing. Honestly, I couldn't tell you. I mean, it's, winning's not something I've ever experienced in any sport. the first down, and that will pretty much wrap things up. Uh, I don't know yet. Honestly, I've never done it, so I don't know if I'm going to be shocked, silent, or going crazy, but whenever it happens, I guess we'll see. Me personally, I'm not really going to know what to feel. <laughs> Last time I felt a victory was my eighth grade year. I'm a senior now, and time is really... It's going by. Much as I hate to say it, it's really going by. I don't have a lot of time left here, but when when we win a game, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not going to know what to feel. It's going to feel good that I know that. up now because I can only imagine. I can picture it right now. I can see I can see the win. I can see everyone with their smiles on their face, their reactions, just getting ready. Just, they, they won't know what to do. I don't think anyone will truly know what to do because it's like it's the first time in forever that it's happened. It'll be the first time in my life that everything like that ever happened. So I just be I just I don't know. I'll just I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I can tell you. I, I honestly don't know how I feel like really. see that at the end of the game the clock ticking down. That we're up on the scoreboard, like that feeling will just like, bring joy. Like, we'll be all pumped up, and, like maybe even have a dog call and feel after that. It's like it'll be, it'll be something. I don't, I don't know. I think it's gonna be a mix of pure joy and excitement and relief that we it's over. Now we just focus on that. Take a knee, and the streak is over.
Buckeye Local gets it done. They snap the streak. Congratulations to Buckeye Local. 43 straight losses, and now they're on a win streak. Buckeye Local, congratulations. For Union Local and let them celebrate. The celebration is on. Several area fire departments treated the kids to a parade through town. Of course, they also got to sing the alma mater after the big win.
Being in that locker room with this group of players is a memory that I will cherish for the rest of my days here on earth. From seeing each of the freshmen, sophomores, and juniors coming in, hugging and celebrating the victory, to seeing some of the coaches smiling, some for the first time, to seeing longtime police officer and Buckeye local coach Rodney Rowe going wild as he encouraged the players. But man, it was seeing the pure joy and tears from the members of that senior class that had been through so much to get to this point made this a special moment. The amount of emotional weight that these seniors had to carry their entire high school career was more than anyone should have to deal with in their lifetime. The pressures that they inherited as 13 or 14 year old freshman boys being built up more and more with each passing game, with each loss to add it to that losing streak. Their entire high school experience was shaped by this losing streak. Yes, it's just high school football, but in a small town where grown men still sit on high back chairs every weekend, reliving their own moments of glory under the Friday night lights, this was their legacy. This was redemption. to hoist when you break a 43 game losing streak and typically you don't get a parade for winning a regular season game but when you lift up the spirits of entire towns of people that for week after week after week for over four years walked home every Friday night empty handed and bitter and sad and embarrassed you take the opportunity to ride around on fire trucks at 11 p.m. and you celebrate together this is a moment that could very well save a football program each year, kids will transfer school so they can play for another local team that wins games. Who wants to carry the burden of the classes that have come before you? Who wants to get laughed at? And who wants to be the only people that believe that you have a chance to win every time you walk out of that locker room and onto that field? For Gino Barber and Gage Bell, Garrett Cesario and Zach Cesario, for Walker Doty and Lane Herbert, Ethan Powell and Seth Richardson, Sam Sabo and Charlie Smith, Andrew Toto and Corbin Westfall, for them, they did their part to make sure that nobody else has to go through this again. They stuck with it through it all so that the next class has a foundation to build on. They will have finished their careers without ever experiencing the thrill of playing in a playoff game, or for that matter, even playing in a game that had playoff implications. But they'll be able to say that they did all that they could so that those coming after them not only have the opportunity, but the freedom to succeed. This moment breaks more than a losing streak. It breaks a stigma. Ending losing streaks like this builds momentum. And momentum makes five-year-olds want to grow up to be Buckeye local Panthers. It makes junior high kids stay and play because it shows them that they can win games here. Winning football games also helps pass school levels. But not only that, this losing streak, it has built a perseverance. And that perseverance has built character. And that character, that brings hope. So moments like this cannot be taken for granted. Because moments like this are what begins to change the culture of 
football programs and in turn changes communities. Uh, when, when, I, when we're done, I want to be uh, known as the class that broke the streak, obviously. And uh, for me, I, I want people to remember who I was playing the game of football. I want, my, I want people to remember my last name. I want, to, I want to build a foundation that allows not us to win, but the entire team. I want us to see maybe for us to win a couple games, three, four, or five games this year, then allow that to transfer on to the years of next. Not just, we're going to be the year, we're going to get four wins, five wins, and then the rest of the year, and then have to go back to what it was, go back to 0 and 10. I want, I, want, I want it to sustain itself. I want to build that foundation for the other class to build upon. I want to be remembered as the class of the streak. Just, we put in all this hard work over the last four years. Different coaches, different offensive coordinators with just three offenses in four years. It, it was tough. We just want to be remembered as the class that broke the streak, finally, won a game. Mm, they were really, I want them to look back and mainly it's, it's all about hard work, coming together as a family and never giving up. Because if you give up, I mean, nothing matters. Everything you do is just gone. It's over. We're, we're going to be the team that breaks this streak. There's nothing that can change my mind on that. We will break this streak this year. If they see us go 0-10 again, then that's it might be their breaking point to leave, but if they see us start winning games, they're going to stay. I want us to be the class of 2020 that starts winning games and keeping kids here, get more kids in. I want them to think that this senior class, yeah, we might not have been the biggest or the strongest, but we're the class that have the most heart. Um, I hope they look at us and be like, that class had great leadership, and they were the toughest senior class to come out of Buckeye Local. Turn the program around and start winning.